Welcome to the SC-25T Frogfoot. The Frogfoot, also called the Gratch, is a very capable ground attack aircraft that can destroy most anything on the battlefield. Before we start blowing things up though, let's first learn how to start up this bird and taxi to the runway. The first thing I'll ask you to do is turn on the electrical power by pressing right shift and L. With the electrical power now engaged, you can see that the heads up display, or HUD, comes to life as well as many instruments and cockpit lights. Before moving the aircraft, make sure that more than three minutes have elapsed in order to let the horizontal situation indicator gyro to align properly. Now that you have power, let's turn on the navigation lights by pressing right, control, and L. Next, let's close the canopy by pressing left, control, and C. Our next step is to start our two engines. Before you do so, make sure your throttle controller has a zero power setting. Start the left engine by pressing right, alt, and home. With the left engine started, press right, control, and home to start the right engine. Off the lower left corner of the TV display is the engine gear, with needles marked 1 and 2 for the two engines. When an engine is being started, one of the two green lights below the gauge will light. Once the light turns off, it indicates that the engine is ready for operation. In the lower left corner of the dash is an aircraft symbol that indicates the status of your flaps, landing gear, and air brake. Lower your flaps to the takeoff position by pressing left shift and F. We're now ready to taxi, so slowly increase the throttles by moving your throttle control forward or pressing page up. To reduce throttle, use your throttle controller or press page down. To use the wheel brakes, press W. Start rolling forward and turn to the left of the taxiway ahead. Press Z to steer left and press X to steer right. Keep your taxi speed around 10 km per hour, as indicated in the top left corner of the HUD. As you taxi, use small, smooth rudder corrections to keep you aligned on the center of the taxiway. At the fork, hang a right to reach the runway. As we taxi, you can go to an external view by pressing F2 and return to the cockpit by pressing F1. You can zoom in and out using the keypad star and forward slash keys. Rotate the views using the keypad direction. We've now reached the runway threshold. Taxi on the runway to the right and align yourself down the length of it. Once aligned down the runway, increase the thrust of both engines to maximum and use gentle inputs on the rudder, X and Z, to keep you tracking down the center line. When your airspeed, 
is indicated in the top left corner of the HUD indicates about 250 kilometers per hour. Gently pull back on the controller and allow the aircraft to fly itself off the runway. Don't yank the controller back to force the aircraft to move. As mentioned before, the airspeed in kilometers per hour is indicated in the top left corner of the HUD. In the top right hand corner of the HUD is your altitude in meters. Between the altitude and speed indications is your heading table. With positive climb established, raise the landing gear by pressing G. In the center of the HUD is the pitch and roll indication, and along the right side of the HUD is your pitch ladder and vertical velocity indication. Go ahead and raise the flap to press in left control and F. This concludes this lesson on starting up the SC-25T, taxi, and taking off. You can end the lesson now by pressing escape key. Welcome to this lesson on the basic flying and navigation of the SU-25T. This lesson will teach you how to get from point A to point Z and all points in between. I currently have the lesson in active pause. If you wish, you can turn on cockpit lighting by pressing L. Your airspeed is indicated in the top left corner of the HUD. The horizontal line below the airspeed indication with the care below it indicates your acceleration or deacceleration. If the care is on the left side of the line, you are deaccelerating. If it is in the center, your speed is not changing, and if it is on the right side of the line, you are accelerating. The smaller number above is your set airspeed for that leg of the route when you're in navigation mode. Press the spacebar to continue. Your altitude in meters is indicated in the top right corner of your HUD. An R to the right indicates this radar altitude or height above ground and not barometric height above sea level altitude. The small number above is your desired barometric altitude for that leg of the route. Press the space bar to continue. You probably notice a circle in the center of the HUD. This provides you poor steering to the next waypoint. By flying the aircraft to align the circle in the center of the bank and pitch indicator in the center of the HUD, you will reach your next destination on the course line. The course line is a direct line between two waypoints. Press the space bar to continue. In the bottom center of your front dash is a horizontal situation indicator, or HSI, that looks like a compass. The yellow needle points directly to your next waypoint, and the top left field indicates the range of kilometers to that waypoint. The top right field indicates your course bearing to reach the next waypoint. The double white needle points to your course intercept. When you're on course to the next waypoint, both the yellow and white needles will align. Press the space bar to continue. Ahead of you are a series of gates to fly through. Fly through the first gate directly ahead of you. You can push the control stick forward to push the nose down and dive, or pull back the stick to raise the nose and climb. These inputs control your elevator. Use the throttle, or page up, to the thrust. Try to keep the gears around 620 pounds. Press the space bar when you're ready, and I will unpause the lesson. Note that when you pass through a gate, the next one's sequence become larger if it's rather far away. If you get too fast, reduce the throttle and toggle your air brakes by pressing B. The next gate is above you and to the left. To change your heading, Use your aircraft's ailerons to roll the aircraft to the left by moving your control stick to the left and then gently pulling back on the stick until you are aligned with the next gate. The next two gates are below you and to the right. This time, roll the aircraft to the right and lower your nose to fly through the gates.
fly through the next gate directly ahead. As you go faster, your nose won't rise, and as you go slower, the nose will to fall. To keep your nose level, try using the trim. If you trim the nose up, press right control and period. To trim the nose down, press right control and semicolon. Keep flying through the gates ahead. As mentioned in the previous lesson, you can also move your nose side to side overgy, using the right overgy, overgy, and the all left overgy. by pressing Z and the all right by pressing X. In the lower center of the HUD, you can see the range indication to the next waypoint. In the lower right portion of the HUD is the next waypoint number, in this case, 15. several autopilot modes that can be quite useful during long flights. These include altitude hold, left alt 1, altitude and roll hold, left alt 2, level flight, left alt 3, barometric altitude hold, left alt 4, radar altitude hold, left alt 5, route follow, left alt 6. You can also toggle route follow mode by pressing A and altitude hold by pressing H. Let's try route follow mode automatic fire flight. There's left all in six. Good. The aircraft is now under autopilot control. This concludes this lesson. You can practice using some of the autopilot modes listed below, or you can end the lesson now by pressing escape.
In this lesson, we're going to learn how to navigate to an airfield and land on it. There are three navigation modes that we'll be using, in route, return to base, and landing. These sub-modes are selected automatically at appropriate points along the sign of flight path, but they can also be cycled manually. In this lesson, we'll use the automatic mode. I currently have the lesson paused as I explain some of the other points. Press the space bar to continue. What we'll learn in this lesson is how to navigate to a waypoint using in route mode, switch to return mode automatically, and then switch to landing mode automatically. We're currently in route mode, as indicated in the bottom left corner of the HUD. This mode allows us to fly from waypoint to waypoint sequence automatically, as we did in the prior navigation lesson. However, in this lesson, we'll try manual selection. Our current waypoint is zero, our starting point, as indicated in the bottom right corner of the HUD, with a range of zero. Press left control and tilde to manually select waypoint one. Good, you will now see that waypoint one is selected with a range of 8.6 kilometers. Press left control and tilde again to select waypoint two. You can see that waypoint two is 15.5 kilometers from us. As we learned in the prior lesson, we can see the direct heading of the waypoint is indicated by the yellow arrow on the HSI and the twin white arrows indicate our path by the course line. Directly above the HSI is the attitude director indicator, or ADI. This is a sphere with one hemisphere white and one hemisphere black. In the center of the ADI is a white aircraft symbol. This aircraft symbol will stay stationary in pitch, but will rotate as you remove or unroll. The ADI ball will move in pitch in relation to the aircraft symbol. When the aircraft symbol center is over black, your nose is below the horizon. If the aircraft symbol center is over white, your nose is pointing above the horizon. Press the space bar to continue. In the center of the ADI are two yellow lines that help assist you reach the waypoint over the course line. The course line is a direct line between the two waypoints. The vertical line indicates your required hazard steering to reach and maintain the course line. When the yellow vertical line is centered on the ADI, you are flying on or to the course line. If the vertical line is off to either side, Put your stick in that direction until the vertical line centers on the ADI and adjust your roll to keep it centered. The yellow horizontal line indicates your elevation course steer. When centered on the ADI, you are flying at or to the set course altitude for that waypoint. The yellow line is on the lower half of the ADI. Push the stick forward until the yellow horizontal line centers on the ADI and adjust pitch to keep it centered. Conversely, if the yellow horizontal line is above the center line of the ADI, pull back on the stick until the line centers. Along the top and left side of the ADI are your heading and elevation deviation scales. The more the lines are from center, the greater you will off the direct path to reach the waypoint. Let's practice this as we fly to waypoint 2. I'll unpause the lesson and we'll press the space bar. You will first need to intercept the course line between waypoints 1 and 2. Note that the ADI steering bars and the HUD navigation circle provide us the same information. Fly the aircraft to center the ADI steering bars by adjusting the pitch and roll to keep the bar centered on the ADI. Or, you can fly to keep the navigation circle on the HUD in the very center of the pitch and bank indicator. The choice is yours. Also remember that the assigned airspeed and altitude of the waypoint are indicated as smaller digits above your current airspeed and altitude. Fly to waypoint 2. Nice job. As you may have noticed, the waypoint automatically cycles to waypoint 3. Go ahead and fly to waypoint 3 along the course line. Maintain a speed of around 400 km per hour.
Now that you reach the last in route waypoint, notice your turn mode has automatically been selected as indicated as RTN in the lower left corner of the HUD. Your navigation steering will now provide you steering to intercept the instrumented landing system beams at the proper heading and altitude. The airfield return number, in this case Mazda, is displayed in the lower right corner of the HUD as number 17. Fly the assigned return navigation. We've now entered the ILS beams and have automatically switched to the landing mode as indicated by the LNDG indication in the bottom left corner of the HUD. The ILS contains a glide slope beam to help guide you vertically and a localizer beam helps you to guide horizontally. Below the landing indication is a K indication that lets you know that you have captured the ILS beams. The upside down L in the lower left side of the HUD indicates that you are on glide slope. If you have not already done so, reduce your airspeed to less than 400 km per hour and lower your landing gear by pressing G. If you need to, deploy your air brakes by pressing B. Lower your landing flaps by pressing left shift and F. Press the spacebar to continue. Also in the HUD are a large and small circle. The large circle is your director's circle. As another note, you can fly the aircraft to center the circle inside the pitch and roll indicator in the center of the HUD. The smaller circle is your glide slope error circle. Like the director's circle, you want to center this in the pitch and roll indicator. If the director's circle is above the roll and pitch indicator, you are too high. And conversely, if it is below the roll and pitch indicator. If the director's circle is left of the center and pitch and roll indicator, it means you are left of the localizer beam. And conversely, Gear down. it is right of the roll and pitch Gear down. Once on glide Gear slope, down. use pitch to control your airspeed and throttle to control your altitude. Just past the outer marker beacon, and your airspeed should be between 290 and 310 kilometers per hour and on glide slope. You have now passed the inner marker beacon in, and your airspeed should be between 250 and 270 kilometers per hour. You just passed the runway threshold. When the radar altimeter indicates 5 meters, reduce the throttle idle and flare the nose Pull such up. that the sink rate, as Pull indicated up. on the right side of the HUD, is between 1 and 2 meters per second. Once all the wheels are on the ground and your speed is below 250 kilometers per hour, release the braking chute by pressing the key. Hold down the W key to apply the wheel brakes until the aircraft comes to a complete stop. Looks like you got her down in one place. You can end the lesson now by pressing the speed key.